Hey, welcome back to another video for our Hero Maker. In this video, we're going to implement a button for deleting a hero, and then we're also going to reset the form, so that way we don't have to change all the controls every time we open it up. So let's uh, add a button label and name. So first of all, the text will change the text to be the word delete, and we'll give the name of the button as btn underscore delete. So to delete an object, I'm going to go to the data source itself. I'm going to hero list dot hall of fame and choose the word remove. Now, what do I want to remove? I want to remove an object from the list. So the item I want to remove from the list comes from the list box dot selected item. Now, why, have, why doesn't this work? Let's see what the error message says. It says you have an object and you need to specifically identify this object as a hero. So it's a casting issue. So let's put in the word hero and cast it that way. All right, so that will uh, remove an item from the list. Now, as we did before with sorting, we have to reset the bindings. So I'm gonna copy a line from the previous method and reset the bindings here. Let's see what that does. Okay, so I create two different heroes. Now I have a list that we can uh, look at for our, our removal. So let's take uh, ABC out of the loop here. So ABC and choose delete, and he's gone. Now ASDF is there, so let's delete him. And now I have a problem. It just crashed. So when I remove the last item from the list, it says I cannot do a two-string method on a, uh, a null object. Your, your list is empty. So to prevent this error from occurring, let's put in the word try and catch around it. So it'll try to do this item, and then we'll catch the error if it occurs. So catch comes next. Now what do we want to do if uh, we have an error? We could put up a message box. We could also just do nothing. So let's just try nothing. So I'll create another hero, and let's see if we can delete him. So he's from the list. I push delete, and he's gone. And now the program doesn't crash anymore. Okay, lastly, it would be nice to have a reset button so that we can refresh this form every time we create a new hero. Okay, so let's put a button in here called reset form. So I'll change the text property to reset form, and I'll also change the name of the button to btn underscore reset. So let's go into here and check it out. What are we gonna do for our method? So there are several ways we can do this. Let's go look up some solutions. So I'm here in Stack Overflow to get a get some help. Okay, it says here, uh, the guy is asking, I was wondering if there's a way I can reset all the checkboxes, text boxes, numerics, and other controls back to the default values without coding everything individually. So he, he tries a few solutions and it doesn't work. There's several ways to do it. I like this one. This one seems to work. This guy created another class called Utilities. And inside there, he made a method called Reset All Controls. And then you can see he does a for each loop and he checks to see if each box is checked, each combo box is checked or check box or whatever. So we can certainly adapt this solution. We can copy and paste our, our utilities and then we can simply call this method right here, reset all controls. So if you like that, go ahead and try it out. Here's another method that comes down here as a, another popular solution. The guy says you can recreate the form again and dispose of the old one. Hmm. This one's much simpler, and uh, let's try that. So let's uh, copy his form, or his code here, and put it into our program. So this says we're going to take a form one and uh, make a new instance of it, show it, and then dispose of the old one. Oh, let's see what that does. So I, I'm going to select a few items and then click uh, Reset Form. You can see that it just destroyed the old form and created a new one. So it works. However, you can see that the new form shows up in a slightly different position as the old one. So that's a little bit of annoying. We could fix that too. So what I'd like to do is make the uh, new form that's created show up in the exact same location as the old form. So in the um, space just after I create the new form, I'm going to set a new property. So new form, and let's try the word start position. There it is. It's called form start position. And then dot, uh, we have choices. So I can put it in the exact center. Uh, let's try manual. 
which means we're allowed to change it. And then we're going to set the new form to where the old form is. So new form uh, dot position. Oh, is it called location? That's what it is. Location equals this location. So the current form one. And then we're going to show it. We'll dispose of the current form one. Let's see if that works. Okay, so I got my new form. I'm going to park it down here the edge of the screen. Reset it. And you can see that it's recreating a new form in the exact same spot as the old form. Does it actually reset the form? Let's see. We'll try a color change, a couple of those, and reset. And it goes back to the original settings. So we got the delete button working. We got this reset form. And we got ourselves a fully functioning app. So we've got a demonstration of lots of controls. And then the second half of this tutorial, we showed a little bit of data management of how to manage a static class where you can share data between two forms. So that's a good stopping point for this project. I hope you've learned a few things about C Sharp and a little bit about uh, forms.